Welcome back to Box of Delights. I'm Ricky Royal. This is After Us, published by Catch Up Games, designed by Florian City X with art by Vincent Dutre. Plays one to six, so I'm going to teach you how to play and then do a playthrough of the solo rules. It's currently only available in French. I bought this from France, knowing that although the rules are in French, the game itself is pretty much language independent. So if you do pick this up, Undoubtedly, it'll get picked up by an English publisher at some point, but if you do pick it up, I'm going to teach you the rules. It's pretty straightforward. You ready? Let's go. The year is 2083. Humanity has long since ended. The primates have taken over the world, formed into groups, learned to adapt in what was a human world. We are the head of one of these groups of primates and must compete to be the most successful. To set up the game, begin by placing the game board in the middle of the play area. The game board accommodates eight decks of cards. There's two decks for each type of primates, a level one deck and a level two deck. For the chimpanzees, the gorillas, orangutans and mandrills. You'll find the level for the deck in the top left corner. So this is a level one deck, this is a level two deck. Shuffle up each deck and place them face down. Then create a reserve of resources at the side of the board. We've got fruits, flowers, seeds and batteries. Grab the set of seven human object tiles, give them a shuffle and then select three at random. For your first game it's recommended to use the computer, the ghetto blaster and the moped. The rest go back in the box. Each player takes a personal player board in one of six colours, two player markers in the matching colour, and four action tokens in the matching colour, and a set of eight tamarind cards in the matching colour. These cards form your starting deck. Give them a shuffle and place them face down to the left of your player board. Place one of your player markers on the zero spot on the rage track. The four action tokens face down on your player board and your second player marker on the zero spot of the scoring track. The winner of the game is going to be the first player to reach 80 points. Each round of the game is played in three phases. You're checked for victory at the end of each phase, so the game can end at the conclusion of any one of those three phases in the middle of a round. If two or more players exceed 80 points, then the player that's furthest ahead will be declared victor. If the scores are tied, then they'll share the victory. There's also a reference card for each player in their colour. I've set up for a two player game here. All of the components go back in the box. A game takes place in a series of rounds during which everyone plays simultaneously one phase at a time. There's three phases. The first phase is life of the tribe. The second phase, arrival of new primates. And the third phase, rest. In phase one, life of the tribe, each player draws four cards from the top of their deck. Your starting deck is represented by the Tamarins, but as the game evolves, your Tamarins will be replaced by other tribe members. Each species will have its own specialisations. The mandrills, victory points and flowers, the orangutans, batteries and fruit, the gorillas, rage and seeds. The chimpanzees tend to be more versatile. Once you've drawn your four cards, the players will then simultaneously rearrange these cards into any order they wish, from left to right. The cards must be aligned vertically. You can't shift them like so. And then we resolve from left to right, top to bottom. Each complete cell, the game calls them cartouches. I'm going to translate this as cells. You could say frames, but I think cell fits thematically. Each complete cell then generates the resources within it. So this cell would generate one fruit, this one one flower, this a battery and a fruit, a flower and a fruit, a seed, two seeds, a flower. And here on the right, we have an incomplete cell. This one would generate nothing. Take the resources from the general supply and place them on your player board. Once you've resolved the top row, you then proceed to the second row. Here we can see an incomplete cell, an incomplete cell. Here we have a more complex instruction. This one says take one victory point, the light bulb sign is a victory point, per tamarind. Remember, on the tamarind card it had this hand icon. So for every tamarind in your display, you take a victory point. Here we have none. 
this is an incomplete cell. This one says, if we have three primates of different types in our display, take a victory point. We do, we've got four different types. This next cell says, spend one battery for two victory points. This is optional. If we want to, we can spend a battery, put it back in the general supply, and score two victory points. Victory points are scored by moving our player token up on the victory point track. So you can see in total here we've scored one victory point plus two for the one battery. So that's three victory points. You can't perform this multiple times, it's once. And the important point is you have to resolve from left to right. So we couldn't potentially use a battery that we've earned later to perform this sales trade. Once you've completed the second line, you do the third line. This is an incomplete cell. Here we can spend one fruit for two victory points. Remember, it's optional. We don't have to do it. But it's just one fruit for two victory points. Here we have two flowers for two rage. We could exchange two flowers, put them back in the general supply for two rage. This is one fruit to repeat any one complete cell in our display. So if we wanted to, we could repeat this one again, for example, and score another victory point. Or perhaps we want some more seeds. We could repeat this one and take two seeds from the supply, but we have to pay one fruit to do so. Maybe we'll do one fruit to repeat this cell here, which gives us one battery and one fruit. And then finally, this is an incomplete cell. So you can see, that how players arrange their cards is important in determining which cells are complete, what resources are gathered, what scoring opportunities will present themselves. A completely different arrangement of the same cards is potentially giving different resources and different trades. Here we have one flower for two victory points. This is an incomplete cell. Here, one battery for two victory points. Two flowers to repeat a cell. We could potentially repeat this one again, hand in another flower for two victory points. Okay, one seed, one fruit for two rage. At any point, so time it well, spend four rage, so your rage token will be going up the rage track. At any point you can spend four rage to remove one card from your display. So let's say I have seven rage, I spend four and remove one card. This card is discarded from the game and you receive the resources in the top right hand corner in this little rage icon. In this case, three victory points. This is how you thin your deck, potentially of weak cards like the Tamarins. Timing this is important because this creates gaps in your display. So if you do it during phase one, when you're resolving your display, the gap is gonna break up some cells. These are no longer going to generate any resources. But you can spend rage any point during phase one, phase two, or phase three. Let's look at phase two now. Again, all players will perform phase two simultaneously. Phase two is the arrival of new monkeys. This is when you get new cards from the general display here and place them in your deck. And it's how you improve your tribe. Each player is gonna secretly choose one of their action tokens, each representing the monkey species represented by the mandrills and the three apes, either the chimp, the orang, or the gorilla. The token you choose determines which species of primate is gonna join your tribe. Let's say I choose gorilla. Place this action token secretly face down. Once everyone's chosen, they'll simultaneously reveal. And then everyone performs the bonus that's shown in the top section of the token. So for me, I'm going to gain two rage. The mandrills award two victory points. The orangutans, two batteries from the general supply. And the chimpanzees let you re-execute one of your completed cells from your assembly. Additionally, at any point during phase two, as soon as everyone's revealed, remember they're simultaneously revealing their action tokens, for two identical resources, any two resources, so it could be fruits, seeds, flowers, or batteries, you can replicate the bonus of a neighboring player. So for example, I could discard two fruits and take the two battery bonus. 
You can only do this once and it can only be a neighbouring player to your left or your right. Obviously in a two player game, you've only got one choice. Once everyone's revealed their tokens and taken their bonuses, they now have one opportunity to purchase a card from the general display. It can only be the species that you've shown on your action token. So I can only buy a gorilla card. Gorillas cost seeds. A level one gorilla costs three seeds. A level two gorilla costs six seeds. If I've chosen chimpanzee, chimpanzees are special and that they can be paid for with any resource as long as it's either three identical resources or six identical resources. So with three seeds, I could buy a level one chimpanzee or with three fruits or with three flowers. You cannot use batteries to buy cards. It's flowers, fruits, seeds, or one of the above. So for three seeds, I might buy a level one chimpanzee. The card that you purchase goes on top of your deck that means it's going to be the first card that comes out during phase one of the next round. And that's it. We've completed phase two. Remember, at any time during phase two, just once for two identical resources, you can copy the bonus of your neighbor. Once everyone's finished purchasing their one card, you don't have to buy a card. We move to phase three, which is rest. During the rest phase, you discard all the cards from your assembly, place them to the right of your player board, ready for the next round. You place the token that you chose for this round face down. Any resources that you have left over, they carry over. There's no limit to the number of resources you can carry. If you want to save space, there's a times three box here. So if I had three flowers, I could instead place one flower in the times three box. We're now ready to move to the next round where we'll be drawing four more cards to create our assembly. If when you're drawing cards, your deck runs out, simply take your discard pile, shuffle it to create a new deck and continue drawing. There's one last thing you need to know and that's how to use objects. Human objects are battery driven. They're gonna be using your battery tokens. Players can turn in batteries at any time in exchange for an object's effect. Each object will say which phase it can be played in. So the Ghetto Blaster can only be used during phase one. The moped can only be used during phase two. And the computer in phases one, two or three. Each has its own ability. So for example, the computer will allow you to exchange five batteries for five victory points. The moped lets you purchase either a level one species card or a level two species card for six or nine batteries respectively. Place them on top of your deck. The Ghetto Blaster during phase one allows you to remove a card from a completed assembly and exchange it for the card from the top of your deck at a cost of two batteries. Each object can only be used once per round by each player. And that's it. We've learned how to play after us. Join me next time as we demonstrate the solo game with a full playthrough.